interrupting the current Corona Cricketism to bring you behind the woodshed. This is Cricket Dude Busting Episode BTWRLM373. But I'm not so sure. It's supposed to be the Cricket Dude Busting. That's for all of us to step up and stop the crickets. Stop making it sound like it's comfortable in the world. As I told you, the window was closing for us to be able to utilize the corona bogavirus, the coronavirus bogus to stop this thing and actually engage what has been failed in this nation, the United States of America, and likely wherever the rule of law and democracy is, where the window's really closing pretty quickly here. For those of you that I are working to write your habeas and find out the background to bring that forward, I thank you very much for stepping forward to do that. Any one of you could actually bust that all open. The problem is, is there not only is the window closing, as soon as that, all those restrictions are lifted, there's no more action for the habeas to work. Those of you that have done the basic research or even went to the links last week or the week before or whatever I put them up should see that. There's no real restraint on liberty. However, as I told you also, and I told you this, well, back in, before the turn, before the turn of the year, uh, the next lockdown provision of the extension of 9-11 was going to happen. I said they were going to bring it likely through a medical Im- imperative because that's the toughest for us to deal with. We're the least capable of, of understanding that, partly because we don't even know the basics of dealing in our own uh, government uh, governmental established, which we were supposed to keep con- contained as the people. And so they went like two steps ahead on us pretty quickly here uh, with hindsight being 2020. And seeing this rolling out and was the perfect timing for the time, did we see, or did we, can we use our hindsight to stop what was coming up? I said this was coming and here we have it and now they're transitioning through. We had five, six months in order to stop it. I told you when that was going to start to slow down because they ran out of ways to keep people confused and that was the flu season. They just came on the heels of that. Now they're giving you another option to chew on and, and scream and yell over and they give you a bunch of exa- bad examples to go ahead and follow and support and that's bringing on another condition so I'm going to talk a little bit about that because we, I want to keep you looking at, at, at being able to see what's coming and but not and identify what it is how to know identify it in the future so you don't get uh, b- caught up in it or s- support it or just deny it you're just denying it's probably the worst because you think that in denial just you're perceptive denial you're actually doing something to stop it but that's not how this thing works and it'll never work that way from what i can tell at least uh, without well it'll never work that way so the the other obligation for people if they want to stop the actual stop the nonsense is to make the constraints on that limited form government and actually limit that government in substantial ways Uh, one of the things of transition now don't focus on the fact that the window's closing. It's still open relative to anybody who has any restraint of their liberty in any way. They can produce the fundamental harm to them, which is everybody who seems to think that they're locked down. Maybe not in Las Vegas. All you folks, now go entertain yourself with the casinos now. I noticed a video breaking in here. You all get to go and entertain yourself with the casino. Give them all your money so they can go buy the politicians to hurt you some more. But So I'm not really talking to all y'all, because if you're down at the casino, you're not sitting down or didn't sit down the last few hours and listen to Grimner's blues, Rock and Blues show to write down, uh, use it as background music as I posted to write your writ of habeas corpus to out the flu coup. Now, I called it the coup. I told you it was a military operation. That doesn't change. I now have noticed this last week. Finally, the tank so-called rolled out into the street. Now everybody sees what I've been telling you is there. But they're behind it. They, as I mentioned to Vin, uh, Vince, uh, Vinny, uh, that this is all, uh, the, the gurus now step up to strain at gnats instead of really understanding what they were really ought to do. Nobody presents even the minimal, the proper engagement, uh, certainly the least of which you'll hear behind the woodshed. Whether you all want to believe that or whether you want to do it or not or think that you can weather this thing 
And the, these people that are in the di in the driver's seat so far, in this hindsight 2020, I told you it's a dual-edged sword. Who's going to hold the handle? The people are losing miserably here. And I'll show you how this is starting to work as we move into the Floyd thing. Okay, so this is a transition because I told you they were running out of reasons to promote to people who are too stupid, really too stupid, too ignorant and too stupid to go look for themselves. And it, I guess I say that real assertively because when I realize when you just go to the CDC website and the FDA, the diagnostic panel, and you find out there is no test, that's the answer. We shouldn't have been hanging around. And if we had stepped in, each one of us that could have jumped in, there would have been a way to focus the individually, all, like I said, hundreds of millions of people step in and, and enforce their fundamental right to the habeas and the restraint against the the remedy against an unlawful restraint of liberty, you would have made your statement. They actually could not have likely brought in this Floyd thing like they have, partly because once you start got, got exercised in what should have happened, you would have realized what you're seeing out in the protest is a promotion to advance the cause. And you could have called it out then with your power. But you're sitting continually powerless because you won't exercise your power. And I've gone through weeks and weeks and weeks and explained to you Everybody in the system understands where your power is, and they tell it to you. And so there's really no excuse. And um, try to find ways to hang on to an optimism to keep moving on. It's really getting pretty tattered here. I probably look for the next thing. I look for the next thing. Maybe I'll do that for the rest of my life because that's who I am. But but there's this is not worth looking good for us. The society will succumb to this new thing coming on. It's not going to be a pretty picture. So let me move on quickly to that. And uh, over at Sound Minds, thank you for simulcasting this. And typically you'll pull up a link and people can see it and then you'll drop it in over there. Uh, I'm not going to, I didn't give you these links real quick, so don't, don't look for them. I forgot to put these up late and I remembered it real late before. So I want to point out something that happened. I want us to look at the dynamic as it's shifting. The new thing that's coming on is very serious. It is the more of the end game they wanted to do. But I want to remind you, because I talk about this, I'm not, saying we're moving, I'm moving on from the imperative that the coronavirus gave all of us to step up and out that for the flu coup that it is, on many levels, on many levels, it's a coup. Mostly for us, it's a coup of your way of life, and that's the thing I'm focused on. The government coup, that's going to sit there because we have no control of that at all. You're just looking at a, to me, that's a minor skirmish going on who's going to be the ruler of the occupation over you and your job and your mission if you wish to, to keep the republic is to stop both of them it doesn't matter either one is no good and we see the infrastructure built the capacity building going on now i'm talking things of sustainable nature the military is involved with all this they want things smart. We've heard all over. I bring this information to you all the time. It's not to tell you about the news. It's to tell you this is the weapons coming. This is what they're doing. This also telegraphs the future for us if we want to see it that way. And we can work with that. We can even work within a military construct. And so you need, if you don't really realize that, I don't know really what to say. I've pointed to you enough places that we should be able to see this. But now the next iteration comes. And this is the further locking down. And again, the countryside, for the most part, where there's not a lot of people, maybe not seeing this. In fact, I'm looking, I go out every morning now, I look for my pile of bricks, the pallets of bricks. I'm waiting, folks. I got plans and plans for bricks. Uh, I, I'm waiting for them to show up on the street, but if they're abandoned. I figure I'll just put them to use, waste lot, whatnot, but they're not going to show up where I'm at. And so this is really constrained to those metropolitan areas that we heard the military talking about. They were boning up on, uh, they were training up on how to contain this. They have to put the infrastructure in. And we heard a little bit of that story. I mentioned it a little bit coming through the week. We heard one of the stories coming out of the Minneapolis Police Department was that the city council was going to dismantle the police department and make a new one. And so everybody focused on the fact what was it was New police department like the old police department, but it's that's where the problem is. It's not. It's going to be the new and improved police department. It's what I told Grimner on one of the tweets in responding to. They're now showing the machination dance or whatever the heck they call that. 
the machination dance is to get you to feel warm and fuzzy with the military and the police in the, the costume military that look like police. This is what's called, and you heard this come out of Minneapolis, as soon as you heard the word transformative, this is where they bring you through. It's the new way to police you. It's all still based in the public buy-in concept. They get you to buy in, that they're warm and fuzzy, that they mean something to you, that they have you in their best heart, uh, under their best care. And that is a warm and fuzzy, and I guess it could be a little gentler too. But that's the point of the cover. This is the, this is the facade. I want you to be aware of it. That's why you still have to keep fighting for yourself because this is the, going to be harder and harder to identify these, these folks of being the occupier that they are. These people are really brilliant as I see this. This really is kind of interesting. Yeah, do the machinations. That's right. Whatever that dance is, you're seeing it everywhere. It, it's amazing you're seeing it everywhere. I mean, this is how this thing works. So what I want to point out is the statement that one of the council people made in uh, council member Lisa Bender. She makes this comment adding to a councilman Ellison's tweet where, who says, uh, we are going to dismantle the Minneapolis Police Department, he wrote, and when we're done, we're not simply going to glue it back together. We're going to dramatically rethink how we approach public safety and emergency response. It's really past due. Understand the and there's conjunctive emergency responses. All this is about this is your your coronavirus bogus is about through and put through emergency responses. If you haven't, all those of you are doing the research for your states to see how it was put together. You're seeing all your laws that were underneath the, the emergency response. Typically, it's under the military department. And typically, that's connected to the federal. So I want to now focus to there because then. This um, council member, Bender, says, yes, we're going to dismantle the Minneapolis Police Department and replace it with a transformative new model of public safety. And so, let's go back, and if you haven't been doing any research in this area and you think what I talk about is kind of not, not playing out, that word transformative and model come present. This is not just a model like we hear are all wrong with your selling you a bill of goods, whether it's COVID-19 or whether it's climate change or not. It's all that same model. That's why it's important. It's pointing, these words are pointing you to who is doing what and what they're about to do. They're going to dismantle the old police department. It's not going to be a new police department like the old. It's going to be a new and improved for the system of occupation. And it's trans. Formative. That means something. And I've been reporting to you the last few weeks, the military identifies with all these things, and yet they're not happy it's not ingrained enough. Should be, should have been a clue to you that every week I've been talking about it, even though maybe you're not picking it up. I'm just trying to talk generalities here, not cause anything, not to cause a promotion, not to cause a red flag either. You're going to have to pick up this stuff as I talk about it, and we're going to have a little bit more longevity. If I start trying to become a red flag in a, before a bull in a china shop, this is not going to last long for us. And so here we have it. It comes out of their mouth. I tend to want to wait a little bit before I commit to say, so I'm not predictive either, because these things can wind their way and take time. But transformative new model. This is the same kind of new model they do to make up stuff. As they kind of work out how they're going to get you to continue to buy in or just don't respond, don't res and resist by not responding, get your consent. Transformative is how they get your consent. How they get you to go along with the program. Now for the police, you see the riots, they bring that up. Now they say, well, transformative, let's bring peace. You think they're talking peace. They're talking about peace for them in the, op in the, op in the operation that they're running on you. Transformative is a thing underneath sustainable. And I'm going to show you, well, I responded, this is where I responded to Grimner came up right after this was the videos, quite a few videos actually, where you heard two, a couple things that caught my ear. One was diversity a lot. Military people talking about diversity. Military people in uniform doing the machinacea dance. Machinations. They're doing this thing to get you to feel like you. they're part of you. Police are doing the same thing. The take a knee is a form of that, but it's also an, a, a liege lord position. Who's their liege lord that they're bowing to? There's a, I think I saw there's a study about the history of 
going to one knee and who that reflects. And I'm going to get to that again. I, don't even want, I partially don't even like going down this stuff because you should read that there. You should put it in the background that it's the fact that continues to run in the background of all of this. And yet it's real difficult to prove for sure. And why I've backed off of trying to talk about some of this stuff and just gone after what they do. And that's been a lot better for me. So I don't have to get and talking to people of things that, that blow people's mind away too much. That's too far extended than the problem at hand. And if you deal with the problem at hand correctly and you have an insight for a foresight, then you can deal with those the things that's behind the scenes. And where we, where we talked about sustainability and we talked about an alternative dispute resolution, which everybody wants to throw out as a thesis, antithesis, and, and then than whatever that is, the Hegel stuff. Yeah, that's just a phrase. There's a whole process behind all that that you have to understand. That's what that is, but that's not really what it does. It's not just their solution. It's all the things that they've done before they, they got you someplace before they could do that. They did it within the system so that you couldn't tell how violative it was. But here we got, uh, vi um, we have a link to a response to a video of the cops, of the military, doing the machination dance so that everyone gets involved they think everyone starts to dance with these uh, occupiers in military uniforms and I made this comment you're looking at transformative policing about to waltz in a warmer and fuzzier military tyranny and so what I want to go back and focus on is the transformative policing as a term I won't have any links for you I'm not going to even touch it I'm just going to tell you you need to write it down you need to see transformative policing. You need to go find out before that there's something called transformational leadership. And you need to search that down because this is all going somewhere. And you see the military is doing. In fact, I saw, I could not find, Twitter's been real good lately. They tell me my browser don't work. It works fine for them to change my stuff and change my feed, but it doesn't work fine for me to get, I've worked real hard to try and get a post out. But for them, it's all real good. The, the browser's working fine for them. Uh, that they changed my feed. I went to go back to find a video of a military guy who was speaking. you got to listen very carefully. They talk in words of diversity. They talk in things of inclusiveness. But if you listen very carefully, they're not talking to you unless you're part of their military, and particularly their military group. And this guy, uh, some lieutenant somebody back in what I remember, he was back in Washington, D.C., talking. You listen very carefully. He's talking to his troops and he's talking about diversity and bringing this thing together in peace. And it's a new way to cause them to be interactive with you, to draw, allow you to drop your guard over what they're doing. And what he's doing was not transformational or transformative policing. It's transformational leadership to his crew. So this is consistent with the Minneapolis lead telling you they're going to move to transformational, uh, transformational police department. This is a sustainable thing. It's already been in the works. It's in the plan. It's in the military. It's not just, just international new world order like we think it's something out over there. It's internal to us. Uh, transforma, uh, transforma, transformative policing, there's, um, there's a, this leads us into some prior understanding that we had. I reported on it a long time ago. It ends up leading back to a federal condition, a federal project, project called COPS, in part. Uh, community-oriented policing services. Okay, so it's a big DOJ thing. And part of the ends are, are pretty good, but what's bringing it in is not. Why they want it is not. That they try to get your friendship be, when they're sitting there as a military. You know them when you see them, folks. It's like You can't take away their uniform. You can't take an, away that they're military just because they use a lesser a lesser costume. This is bringing in a federal program that they've been feds have been wanting to do local to you. And, you, and they're doing it in the cities because the counties are a little bit different in the, in the states, I believe, because of the sheriff. It doesn't mean that, what, well, we've, what I've seen is they take the city cop who was on SWAT, who has all the military training, he runs for a county sheriff, he gets elected because he's all, because everybody believes in, you want to, you know, police security. He gets put into the sheriff, and then that guy just follows the the transformative regime. And you can't even tell now he's inside all that. And they pulled it from the cities. So we've already seen a lot of this. But this all works to a federal pro a project called COPS. And you can research all this yourself. 
I'm just naming these so you go do the research. I'm not going to focus in on it. And then uh, thank you to Popper over there in uh, the, the UCY chat happened to pick up a link that really confirms this. And it's uh, Minneapolis mayor asked Trump for aid after riots caused at least $55 million in damage. The important thing about that is they've gone directly to Trump to pay for the damage, which will usually attach a re, um, obligations of the local government, or the local city mayor to the federal project and program that they're advancing to get the money. So it's not about the money here. But you're seeing the natural, right in the news, you're seeing the natural translation from Minneapolis from a local control, now going likely going to be a federal control that is implementing these transformative things on you. Remember, transformation is the T in SMART. Okay, so they get your buy-in through all this process. And at one level, I, I believe that the police need to be kinder and gentler, but that's not the reason why they're doing it. Again, if you go back to the Libra Code as a guide, you'll find out that they're doing everything they are to protect themselves. And however they get to, however, whatever it takes to do that is that they will. It doesn't change the fact that they're still there in your face, and you may not even see that. Though you do the machinations with them, you can do your all, all the movements. I wonder why that was programmed to, how, how that was known to be programmed to everybody to do, to then use today. It's really a fascinating observation just to watch, just to sit back and say, wow, look at how people just get into this. If, uh, if a cop, if a military guy can do the machinations, then he must be cool. She must be cool. And all that's to protect those troops. And then the transformative leadership explains that they need to, those troops need to stick together and stick with the program in a new capacity, in a place that these military troops are admitting to you in the news as well. They are not trained to deal with you in a civil type of con context. This is how they're trying to buffer the military into a civilian, if you will. Civilian imp implicates war as it is, if not just the attorneys. Implicates that you're in an occupied condition when they reference, anybody references you as a civilian, it's from a military consequence. And again, the clues, the terminological clues are with us the whole entire time. So let me move on now. That I have to interject that Minneapolis, it's critical to understand what they're doing. They're using these provisions to bring in transformational things that the military is on board with, has been. They're the ones that are developing a lot of it and or working in partnerships across the international borders, another, essentially breaking down all the borders. Anybody who talks about a coup relative to the government right now and they look at the difference between the Democrats and the Republican or Trump and the Democrats, that's one of them, but that's not the most important one because that's the infighting of who's going to control the coup over you. And so let's be very careful on what we start supporting. And why I say your talk is cheap, Truth is the action. It's that proper action that's going to bring back your way of life. And I will say again, I can't tell you how important this is for everybody really to get. I didn't get no 100 million people tuning in. I didn't get certainly didn't get the 300 that we needed to run this thing uh, back on the track and then throw out the throw the bums out. We got about a handful. If we could get the word out that this COVID-19 was a was the door that could throw off all of this. People don't understand how, what I say, I can just imagine, you don't understand how that would work. This thing is so, this COVID-19 was so pivotal to the corruption of where they wanted to go, as I predicted to you at the beginning of the year coming in, that it allows you to then gain the expertise quickly for your own self, saving yourself, every one of you, that you then become the power that you didn't think you were because you've now started to lay the record this is like a domino falling condition. It lay the record of how the government can be wrong, can do trust breaches, will do wrong, will lie, will do all this, and you've now got them backpedaling. And if a bunch of you would start doing it, then we're not going to get the one man out problem where they just target the one who or one woman out, one the one who advances this. It's a potentially a problem. Depends on how you pull that off. Depends on who you come up against. That's all just analyzing the, the battlefield. It's not a, and it's not for jeopardy. It's to keep from being putting yourself in jeopardy. So let me move on now. Minneapolis, I think, is giving us the right there in that Minnesota area too. It's really interesting how that became a focal point as well. 
it's like you I see the duality of what's going on. If we would just put pressure on the side that needs to have enforcement and not let them have their way, we will see things break out. I, I'm saying that. My mind keeps saying, but stop talking. No one's listening. And that's that's part of the, what the truth is. But anyway, I'm going to keep talking because that, that needs to be done. It may be the last thing we end up doing is finally standing up correctly and doing something right. I don't know. Or we don't. We we succumb. As I, my last my last Twitter, I think, is a, will we prevail or succumb? It's hindsight Operation Hindsight 2020. This is the question. This is the battle. It's not what Trump is doing versus the Democrats. It's what you're doing to protect yourself. COVID gave us that direct standing for everybody that they're now utilizing to bring in the next iteration through this Floyd thing. So we move on, and California is a blue, they call it a blue state. It's one of these states that are more consistent on the international sustainable agenda. It doesn't mean that Republicans are not. I've told you no governor in the United States yet has had their, their orders challenged directly. And they're all making the same cover-up, the cat box cover-ups going on. The California Assembly constitutional amendment to cut off public from legislative process during emergencies. In this story, it's not really to report that. They're taking advantage and exploiting the condition. They, they start, well, I should read a little bit of this in here. Critical, critical of Governor Gavin Newsom's, Newsom's Noisom's, in unchecked emergency powers during his declared state of emergency and statewide lockdown ostensibly for coronavirus. California Assembly members have authored a constitutional amendment to allow the California legislature to also work in secrecy during a declared state of emergency. Any kind of state of emergency could be named. That opening paragraph sounds not like they're concerned more than they're jealous of this type of power. And so what this is, let me get to the bottom. You get down and read the article, and I just don't, I don't have these things highlighted. They don't come up well. But what they're going to tell you is that they're going to allow themselves to do essentially e-government, digital government that you can't get, see them, visit them, be around them, be anything, when there's emergencies declared. What they're promoting here actually, when you see that they want to do it in secret, is certainly not open government. That's counter to the Republican form right there. That's certainly not just that they want to keep it secret. That's counter too. It's that they want to implement the ability to do government by, by the Internet. This is one of what? One of the conditions they want to impose upon you, e-government, that, that you heard come out of the minister of the World Bank, I think it was, or the federal, I think it was the World Bank. Anyway, we talked about that a couple weeks ago. They, this is one of the things they want to impose. It's not just about the secrecy. It's just not about, it's about that they want to implement a different type of, of government, but it's governance now. It's bureaucrats that you have no say over. And I've always been amazed that this stuff even, that they even offer this. This should be on its face a violation. As I say, as you can see inside of certain court cases, where they speak to the constitutionality of your of your restraint of liberty is now looked at. That's what we're talking about, should already be looked at, before these even come to see the light of day. But we don't. And so we see the entire system has been co-opted. It's a different type of Occupation. It's also one the military would agree with. So, to me, if I, it's like a pickle fork. No matter what, any two choices that you're presented, it's going to be attached on the other end. Whatever they're going to stick you with, a one time or the other, or both, there's, it's attached back to a central authority and power. We saw the twitters of the Jamie Dimon and the banking industry putting on one knee, like the they want you to, like they're in solidarity with all y'all. No, no, they're 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 professing a liege, they're professing a allegiance to a liege lord in the current Middle Ages, as I wrote about in back in 1999. Okay, so this is how I guess I'm just talking through this observation that's long term. This is not just happening this time just because of COVID. This is a long term process, and the transformation is what their uh, uh, end result is. And so that you're watching the exploitation of these frauds that no one steps up. The, the courts tell you that they're not going to even try to stop unless someone steps up. They'll let it go on, which should, should be no good at all. We need to change that as well. 
that the California is going to try and keep the legislature's jealous of what a governor's rights are, and they had the and this shows you the stupidity about this, but actually the underhandedness of it. The the legislature had the power to shut it down, as they have inherent power to stop excesses of it every other branch. You're just watching the failure of of an established government. This is not government. Everyone who rails against government, government is just a form, and it has all kinds of all kinds of structurings. In the country, United States of America, the obligation to keep that working and functioning was on the people. And I heard crickets. It's just a fascinating thing. So, be of of again looking down. They're they're moving. They're moving from upon the impetus of the emergency, so called of COVID, that you didn't check. That you didn't challenge. Nobody did. Now, the jealousy so-called of one branch over the power to destroy you and another branch is now going to be exploited. They want that kind of power, too. We're going to uh, I'll predict we're going to hear crickets on this, too. We shouldn't. The people should stand up and should know how. And they don't. And I'm just, I just don't see how people know. In fact, anybody that I'm discussing, we find out pretty quickly, there's a whole lot that has to be understood that they never told us. Before we can even start to address certain things, but what? But again, once you learn that basic foundation, and you start moving from the foundation and start bouncing off, stop bouncing off the walls with what you think you know and what you want to get done, and focus, make the singular narrow path for yourself, and then go proceed on that and qualify what you need to qualify. It goes pretty quickly after that. I'm pretty impressed at some level of what gets pulled together. I'm also impressed at what people don't see that I see. I mean, this is in a functional sense. How to use what you're reading as an aid to you or as an advantage to you when most people look at that and find it to be a disadvantage. And so this is another blindness that we have. It's an ignorance. I mean, we have to admit to all these things, and then then we'll be able to move forward. So California is on the move, and they have been. Like all the western, west coast states, they're, they're attempting to move, move things along to bring in what is more of a governance and not a government. So, now, the immediate example of why we can't, of many reasons why we can't go to e-government, even if you never went to a meeting, you have to know you can't go to e-government. And, and this is what's interesting. That we see, when you go to anything e, digital, internet, that it's exploitable, and this is the footing they want to put everything on when they go and do this. These people that are internationalists that do the economic destruction of your life that's coming through the World Bank and things like that. Uh, here is when you go to to get help, and they want to give the big promotion, the talk, 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 you Americans, talk. Well, you're dead now, and you go try to figure out a way to get a resuscitator for yourself. You find out that the e-government doesn't exist for you. Here's an example, and I think Meister Brown knows this from the RLM chat. Mind-bogglingly frustrating, maybe even uh, Moose Girl, I don't know. Uh, mind-boggling, mind-bogglingly frustrating. U.S. says red flags missed in bogus state jobless claims. So this e-government, out of, out of Olympia, Washington, tens of thousands of people are out of work across Washington state or in limbo, targeted by an international ring of criminals involved in massive unemployment fraud. Now, you, the American people, cannot get into your own supposed web, your e-government website, but the criminals can. The criminals can dupe you, like the government criminals can dupe you. And so this is a, an example of what e-government's like. You don't get the benefits. They take everything. They make the controls. And here, you can sit and continue to watch it or are required to step up. And if you don't, you can sit. And when it comes time for you to need to help, you're not going to get that help. I've had some people, a couple people talk to me, and I, I think it's people are knowing the money came out. They said the money was coming. They said it was going to be sent around. And all of a sudden, lots of people found out they weren't going to get theirs immediately. Then they were going to get theirs for months. And then some found out that when they should have got it, they weren't getting it at all because there was some law somewhere that took it back. And I looked at that. I said, oh, that's just a money laundering, essentially, from the benefits side of the of ledger over into the coffers of the government. And, and so this is e-government working. you got the e-government working. That you, the, they'll let the, ex, the criminals, they'll miss the red flags. They didn't miss that red flag law at all, did they? Well, they missed this red flag, and this is e-government. This is what you have to expect if you allow them to bring in the government that's 
COVID-19 is allowed to be brought in. And then I know it's a difficult thing, and maybe you're not versed in it, and maybe you never even went to a meeting, but if you don't start figuring out at these e-government meetings and this requirement that they do so and that they make that sound important that they need to do that isn't the destruction of your civil government that was supposed to sit that could still sit there the people inside which could still sit there to protect you instead of allow things to exploit you this is the world that you're seeing right here so e-government right there you don't get as the criminals continue to plunder and that's where we are right now and all over the whole world how'd that happen How'd that happen? On a fraud. And that information's coming out. As if no one wanted to listen to me, there was no test. We can go through the long-winded discussion about this coronavirus bogus if we want. German officials, official leaks report denouncing corona as a global false alarm. Boy, that's soft peddling. It isn't. German federal government and mainstream media are engaged in damage control after a report that challenges the established corona narrative leaked from the interior ministry and then they go through a whole bunch of lists of things that they're wrong i'm asking you there's the proof of the finding from a government in germany from people in germany you can take this list and those of you that are writing your writing your your habeas and doing the research about how that law that they have the the restraint is not lawful because it failed to follow the rules well you have to understand this everybody that looks into their rules as i said is finding none of these orders followed any of the rules and that's essentially how simple they are to attack. You just have to put that together. Here it's showing, on the outset, even if you didn't understand that there was no test to prove the infectious agent for a communicable disease, not the name of the disease, that another country has independently researched and found that it's fraud. They say false alarm. You had rights destroyed by it. That's treason. That's felony. So here is a list of things you can maybe take down, look at. It's not the first thing you present. It's after you've made your case about the fraud of the insertion of the restraint of your liberty unwarranted. You say, here's the causes and here's how they could have known. When they did their assessment, they never did. And they never certified to it. They would have found what this German people, German government found. Another one. Uh, it's all bullshit. Asterisk T. Three leaks that sink the COVID narrative. And you can go through the list. If you don't want to simply say there was no test and attach it to the essays, the assessments that were never done and certified to. And the process followed that they're supposed to go through was really kind of amazing to me. What's being found about the extensive procedural deck recording of these things are supposed to be done none of which has been done just like i told you how did i how can i see so much folks i don't know what to say more than that well how can i see so much that i declared and told you that before going in they would start to do this and it's been done that way it's the same site you can have to not be affected by it really and be able to continue to address it objectively so here's another one you can go through all the list of all the things that could have been anticipated. I'm just bringing them up as if you're involved with protecting yourself and just overthrowing the flu, flu coup, which is now extending over into transformative policing, which is going to be actually what that is, is more cops, what they call on the beats now. They're trying to bring back the nostalgia of the past. And they're going to be more in your face, and it gets into more pre-crime if you that pre-crime concept that you were t hearing about, that's what it's doing. That's what it allows the cops to get out, and they try to anticipate, prevent crime before it happens. So look very carefully at what transformative policing does. It's not, you may agree with it because they've made you smile and you could do the machination dance with them. This is not at all what it appears when it gets into practice. But uh, moving on back to, to this Here's two lists that show now people researching. Six months later, from what I told you, this was going to be medical martial law under the cover of something valid that was not. We now can go through and find out all the things that have been wrong that may become an amendment addendum onto once you prove the case of the invalidity of the order against your restraint of liberty and you free that up, then you find out how 
who eliminate if you need to. I'm not saying to do that. I'm saying it's all listed. You can keep that in, in, in check to show all the things that could have been found had the local government did done the assessment and certified to that assessment. The evidence of which is missing in the record. That's pretty much the limit of what you say. You really say, to my knowledge and belief, after researching the database that it was supposed to be in, I find it. I find the certification and the filings missing, absent. And then you can say, see, because there's no test, and one who under, and one who understands the fraud would know that's the truth, that no filings proves there was nothing that they could test for to certify to. And so the absence of the record is the proof there was never anything in the in the first part. And so you can self-support your discussion, not to go on and on and on and talk and talk. These should be line, line fact statements that tie together by how they integrate with your proof. And so, again, now we move on further, the exasperation of those because they didn't do an assessment, and the failure to, to and the, the reliance on faulty information, which is going to be there, you have to address this likely, they're going to rely on that, they're going to say, I was supposed to, you know, I followed the CDC guidelines. Well, the guidelines weren't the law. The guidelines were them to pay attention if they, and a, and a suggestion that they think they had a problem, they were supposed to start doing their assessments to qualify that. That the treatments that were coming, and this may be beyond a habeas, unless you're someone who got affected and adversely as well, because the fraud covered over how you would be treated. And these are the really the people that I would be talking about here. If you didn't get the treatment you should have because it was all covered by COVID or they threw you out, wow, that's a medical malpractice. And it's all based on information that uh, down to the doctor they were supposed to analyze for. If I'm, If the information I'm getting from people doing the research is true, I mean, without, I'm saying true in the fact that the interpretation that we're making on the fly is accurate. There was, again, there's supposed to be an honest record making. And when it wasn't, that's malpractice. It's also falsifying records and all this other stuff. I don't want to add so much, but these are all the things that you have to overthrow the flu coup and start to re-empower yourself to go after this more important one of transformational, transformational control. A study claiming hydro hydrochloroquine raises death risks redacted. And this, what this is, is three of the four so-called experts who made this study that said that there was hydrochloroquine caused death retracted because when they went, when the peer reviewing tried to happen, the source of the data would not release that information. Three of the people that were the fourth one was the owner of the company that supplied the data. Three of the people, the so-called experts that relied on this data, retracted retracted their report that hydro, hydroxychloroquine causes death. Now I've reported months and months and months ago. You just go right to the wiki and read that this this hydrochloroquine is used for years and years and years and years and years since the 40s, I think, all over the world. And yes, there's a certain risk to it, like any medication, any drug, anything you're going to take in. There's a certain risk, but that was all based on certain conditions that could easily be, I said easily, be avoided just by having a doctor pay attention to certain things. And so the point is the experts say is experts saying nothing. And they are going to try and use these things, these studies at the time. You've got to be able to destroy the fact that they could rely on any of it, the proof of which they couldn't anyway. And again, your argument, if it's an argument, had they followed the black and white already existent in the law, you would not be suffering the unwarranted restraint on your liberty. For those of you that couldn't get treatment or that that was denied to you, that's malpractice. Why? Because it's, so you can go to Wiki and see it was used all over and the limited, uh, sir, the limited, uh, contrary indication, contraindications would not have necessarily, maybe didn't affect you at all. But that, you didn't get that opportunity to test it either. And so this is a big malpractice infringement by a fraud that was accepted without any official, uh, 
qualification as to the law. We move on now to groundbreaking study, another one written by a story written here by John Rappaport. I want to remember, remind you, he was instrumental in all the things he wrote in highlighting certain aspects in one link for sure, the link over to the FDA's confirmation that there was no test in the panel. Those things helped to bring us, for me, to understand actually how simple this whole thing is to prove as a fraud. Not necessarily, I haven't talked to John, we don't respond to each other. Not necessarily that he was able to focus everybody there, but his information is partly instrumental in getting us to where we are. I wanted to give a shout out to that. He brings up us an, another uh, another report here relative to manufacturing vaccines, and that they uh, the study finds that the vaccines are heavily contaminated with a variety of nanoparticles. Anyway, I I don't want to read the article. You need to read it. You need to see this is another contamination for those of you that are into vaccines because where are we going with this COVID? They want to do another vaccine, whether it's an RNA or a DNA-style vaccine. This is an additional problem within the context of how they manufacture these vaccines that he now brings to us, as any of you might be interested my thought on this is you bring these studies forward and a re, you can reopen. Those that are interested can reopen the FDA's inquiry where they failed to recognize these things and cause them to have to go look at them again. As I've told you through the administrative process side, you can go look at Title V of the United States Code for that. But he does a great job at exposing a new potential of nanopart- nanoparticles that are heavy metals and things like that that are involved. And I would have to caution you, when as I read through this, the way this law, these laws for these medications work, if you have to anticipate that the industry will say, well, the efficacy, again, it's not safe and not tested to be efficacious, but they're going to say, that's presumed efficacious, you need the vaccine, and that good, the common good of that outweighs our ability to process this vaccine any cleaner. And if they get that, you got to protect against that. Because if they get that, they'll be able to pollute the water a little bit, if you will, with the, with the analogy to the Clean Water Act. Once the common good is declared and needed, they can do and given give license, be given license to do about any harm to you that the government can get away with. And this is again, I say, just go to back over to Title 50, and you read all the exceptions to the government to do so. And then you understand this military consequence, why they think about do, utilizing these weapons. And people will complain about them, but people don't really orient their mind about really what the battlefield is and how to address it. And then now we need to really uh, amass a groups of people in properly a- acting to stop this, not like the protests. The protests, like the, the, like the Floyd protests, that's all a promotion, literally a promotion. It's not what you should be doing. That's not the action I'm talking about. And, and so anyway, I've talked about a lot of this. I don't don't know what to, who who's listening to it. What do you want to do? I don't know if you've got. My thought is COVID's the biggest thing going right now. Just know that there's also nanoparticles that haven't been tested for, and they actually the testing that they now look at it almost looks like they're put in there as adjuvants to cause immune response d- disasters. And again, remember these these vaccines are more importantly to my mind now. They're actually shown to cause future susceptibility and increased medical conditions. So this is that's just whether you ever go to FDA or that's just word to the wise on we we the we the plebes don't get the information, although that information is already given to you. Notice in the data sheet, the product data sheet, it's all written in there if you just read the fine print, and that's another option that we have. But anyway. John Rapport is advancing knowledge here that vaccines have nanoparticles that appear to cause problems on their self. For those of you that do it, I don't think that's, to me, that's just the new, the new COVID vaccine. The flu-like symptom vaccine, you tell me how that's logical, and I'll, and I'll, I'll show you I'm, an, I'm insane. But no, it can't, flu-like symptoms, you're not going to have a vaccine against COVID-19 flu-like symptoms. You're not going to make a vaccine where there is no test over an vi- infectious agent. That, Vaccine's not going to work over the common cold, and it's not novel. All these lists of things. 
sitting straight on the face of the record that have been violated in you to keep you restrained of your liberty or allowed to coop you up and then you, whether you agree with the, pro the protests or not or just disregard them, you're, you end up being lumped into all of that and as the government starts to work the next, as I said, extension of 911, the, the screws being tightened even further with what that started. And remember, that just didn't come out of thin air. That was planned as well. And so, but what came up in the news, now moving and shifting gears a little bit, in the play out of this global thing, and you, you want to think that the military of the United States is singularly in the, in the United States. It's not. It's got its fingers everywhere. It's total dominance is what they tell you. And they're not joking about all that. And they don't care that you're underneath, you're an enemy combatant, because that's total dominance. See, they've, they've lost the constraint. Have they, as they've lost constraints all over the, all over everything in your, in your life. But this little report came out. It was very interesting to my mind. It's a topic and subtopics I don't normally get involved with. But they sit there to inform me who the players may be in the background. Who may be the Jamie Diamonds of the world of banks and all the people taking a knee? Who might be the liege lords? Uh, what might be outside there? This little report here focuses on the bigger aspect, possibly the bigger aspects. But for me, it was the tactical and strategic moves that are going on. In this case, good cop, bad cop of someone exercising a pickle fork in order to get you to figure out and buy into one side or the other and you forget that someone's actually got a pickle fork that goes to one handle and someone's actually jabbing it out there to get you to pick a side or not pick at all and not do anything about it which is really the worst of it all they they want people not to respond is what they really want at all but for those that might think that they have a cause they want you to pick a side and that's that divide and conquer idea. But this little story, Art, pretty to me, it just got me thinking about all kinds of little things. How do you really know who's playing what? And then you got to read inside the words. I'm going to read some of the words here and try to do a little bit of an analysis on the fly and try to show you, hopefully, it's like this ongoing thing, like, what is this transformative stuff? Did you even know about that? Did you even know that's what's playing out in the news right now? There's the transformative, transformational leadership is being promoted to you, but it's not speaking to you. It's speaking to their troops. Transformative, transformative policing is doing the machination dance, and you're going to think that that's warm and fuzzy and cool, and you'll embrace, and you'll talk to now the cop that comes underneath the transformational, transformative policing to give them information because he's such your friend. And he's building a dossier of that pre-crime that you didn't quite get. Even if you don't talk to him, they take note of that. But they're in your face. They're right there watching. That remember uh, what in that neighborhood watch was an extension of this process as well. A bunch of uh, rat finks right in your own neighborhood. At any rate, Archbishop Vigano, pa pa Vigano's powerful letter to President Trump, eternal struggle between good and evil playing out right now. And that, that sung to me because that's what I've talked to you. I've told you we're in the time of deception. Evil is working to prevail. And it's up to us to at least obstruct it as best we can and give us give people examples they can obstruct it. And in that is really, I think, more be the example is really what we need to be doing and work continue to work to stop the evil, whatever that evil is, the wrong that you, you, need, you find that you need to make right. So that spoke to me, the forces of good and evil. But this is an archbishop, and he's using the title in the title where it's being used to describe it. And so I didn't know a little any much on this story. It ends up being this Archbishop Carlo Maria Vigano supposedly, and it's in the record, like last month, outed uh, some pedophilia and or un, that uh, Pope Francis knew of some abuse in the system that wasn't reporting it, uh, and that that was his new, now he's making his notice, he's considered a whistleblower, and I want to make, put a quote or quotes around that, remember, be careful of the false whistleblower, be careful of the deception that can be built in the good cop, bad cop, even the fabric, especially the fabricated one, and I'm saying this right here because as we go through, and whether or not I'm going to be able to articulate it clearly enough as I read, I want you to understand that we're looking at a 
an interesting news article, an interesting notice that is purporting to do things that when you, if you understand the pickle fork idea where you can have good and evil, but they're attached to one handle and someone's implementing that and that one's not so good, then maybe this will help you a little bit understand maybe what I think we're seeing here. And this good and evil, let me offer something else in observation. The good and evil is from the perspective of, again, the one jabbing the pickle fork in your eye. Which one are you going to agree to? Maybe both of them. The, the one that's the, that's the perspective of the one who feels what they believe is good and evil. That can be another setup and another pickle fork. And so this is what I started to see in this story. We got a so-called whistleblower telling Trump to watch out, watch out what's hip. This exposes the fraud you've been hearing on the global stage. And yet I'm looking at words inside of here that say, this is a good cop, bad cop. And there's a pickle fork on this. I don't care how deep, how many pickle forks back we're going to go. It all goes to the same source. And maybe that's an indication of really how big this thing is, and I think it is. That's why I'm talking about it. And uh, so, like I said, it goes back to all the, you know, these so-called conspiracy theorists, things about what you see, who the, uh, like, who's it, who's at play behind the scenes. They're all subgroups of a, of a and, and they all end up being forks of going back to a, to a cause, which I think is really the, the evil that we have to be aware of. Not the evil necessarily that this, Archbishop is talking about. Let me uh, here uh, start to read a bit. Archbishop, as the editors note, Archbishop Carlo Marino Vigano has released this powerful letter today to President Trump, warning him that the crisis, current crisis over the coronavirus pandemic and the George Floyd riots are a part of the eternal spiritual struggle between the forces of good and evil. He encourages the president to continue to fight on behalf of the children of light. And this is put in quotes. Children of light. Well, if one interpretation, the children of light are whom? And when you have an insight of what that is, you understand the pickle for. He's pointing to what we would say the children of light as being good, and in fact, it's not. And when you understand that, then maybe you'll start to see what's really going on in this, in this promotion to make it look like President Trump is being, well, it looks to me like there's an encouragement to President Trump. But the problem is that it's, you're looking at, again, two factions, the Democratic Party and the Republican Party, and that's another pickle fork that they're going to stick you with depending on which, which tang they get in. Let me read a little bit of this says, Mr. President, and so, I mean, I guess the point is if you're are sided with the president and this guy comes out as a whistleblower against the Catholic Church and sides with the president, if you support President Trump, you're going to think this guy's a good guy. And I say it that way, I don't think this guy's a good guy. No, he can, again, you can be told all kinds of truth. How unusual is it now that we understand that there's a pedophilia in the church that Pope Francis hasn't stopped? It's years now. It still hasn't been stopped. And yet this seems to be something that's important to be stated. Again, I think it's being stated to get favor in the perception of people. In recent months, we have been, he writes, we in recent months, we have been witnessing the formation of two opposite, opposing sides that I would call biblical, the children of light and the children of darkness. Now, if you understand really that the children of light is the Lucifer, the children of Lucifer, and that the children of darkness would be anybody that's anti-Lucifer and not Luciferian, then maybe you'll understand how this immediately comes out and be is flipped, even though when you read it, you want to feel like let's encourage we're encouraged to do the children of light. So keep all these possibilities sitting out there. Then I think if you don't, you diminish your ability to understand. So we, his biblical children of light and the children of darkness is what he references. The children of light constitute the most conspicuous part of humanity, while the children of darkness represent an absolute minority. 
Well, humanity, folks, is not men and women. That's the animals. And he makes a very interesting, I don't know which article I'll get to here, he makes a very interesting distinction later at the very end of one of his statement here, I hope I get to it, where he talks about humanity, and then he talks about men and women. They're not part of humanity by his own statement. And so again, it's a terminological analysis as you as I'm reading, and I had to I just went through this really quickly, just to get the eye of flavor of what was going on here. It just amazes me. These people talk this way and they tell you what's going on if you if you recode the words. And he why would he make the distinction if all of humanity was man and woman and make them distinct at the end? They're not. And he knows that. So you have to understand this is not a stupid guy and he and he's talking in code. And so the children of darkness represent the, the absolute minority, and yet the former are the object of, of a sort of discrimination which places them in the situation of moral inferiority with respect to their adversaries who often hold strategic positions in government, in politics, in the economy, and in the media. In an apparently inexplicable way, the good are held hostage by the wicked and by those who help them either out either out of self-interest or feel fearfulness. These two sides, which have a biblical nature, and this is word is italicized and capitalized, follow the clear separation between the offspring of a woman and the offspring of the serpent. You ever heard that one here before, folks? Cain and Abel? On the one hand, there are those who, although they have a thousand defects and weaknesses, are motivated by the desire to do good, to be honest, to raise a family, and to engage in work, to give prosperity to their homeland, and to keep the needy, and in observance to the law of God, the, to merit the kingdom of heaven. There's another thing I need to interject here. It will tell you that there's a good God and an evil God. Which one is he talking about here? And in part, I don't want to suggest too much. I want you to start thinking about that when you read this and start to work that out. It takes a little while to read through some of this and keep all the players in place. He goes on and continues. On the other hand, there are those who serve themselves who do not hold any moral principles, who want to demolish the family and the nation, exploit workers, and to make themselves unduly wealthy, foment internal divisions and wars, and accumulate power and money. For them, the fallacious illusions of temporal well-being will one day, if they do not repent, yield to the terrible fate that awaits them far from God in eternal damnation. Doesn't the Catholic, the Vatican, the Catholic Church embrace sustainability and mere human humanity and not men and women? Aren't, isn't there? I mean, if you if I read that list a bit, I would say that my mind turned to the the Vatican, the Catholic Church, and he says, "Far from God, which God?" As he acknowledges an evil, good, and like a good and evil one. It is the plural, also, when you read the book. He goes on to say here, in society, Mr. President, these two opposing realities coexist as eternal enemies, just as God and Satan are eternal enemies. Isn't that interesting? He defines later God is a good God and a bad God, and then he says, and Satan. So do we have God, Lucifer? But we, when they say God Almighty, which is even a perturbation, Lucifer and Satan? Consider that. And so we start seeing a splitting of the discussion. That takes a lot to work to figure out what he's actually saying, coming from his title underneath a Vatican representation as a, quote, whistleblower outing a condition in the church like he's some good guy coming to tell the president, which some people think is a great guy, who I've told you had an opportunity to stop all this nonsense and didn't, puts every wrong person into office that you can, that anybody with an objective view can see should not be where they're put. And this letter speaks to the deep state, 
And he goes on, and, uh, and it appears that the children of darkness, whom we may easily identify with the deep state which you wisely oppose, and which is fiercely waging war against you in these days, have decided to show their card, so to speak, by now revealing their plans. They seem to be so certain of already having everything under control that they have laid aside the circumspection that until now had at least partially concealed their intentions. The investigations already underway will reveal the true responsibility of those who manage the COVID emergency, not only in the area of health care, but also in politics, the economy, and the media. We will probably find that in this colossal operation of social engineering, there are people who have decided the fate of humanity, arrogating to themselves the right to act against the will of citizens and their representatives in the governments of nations. And since when has the Vatican been, been, been caring about those when it supports sustainable development, which is the overthrow of that through what? Transform transformative means. In particular, alternative dispute resolution, which the Bar Association oversees, the supporter and promoter of sustainable development, and the legal advisor to the Holy See in the UN. The fate of humanity. What about the men and women? What about the men and women he acknowledges later on, which we haven't read yet? I'm just telling you that's coming. He goes on and writes, we will, to Trump here, we will also discover the riots in these days were provoked by those who, seeing the virus in inevitability, inevitably fading and that the social alarm of the pandemic is waning, necessarily have had to provoke civil disturbances because they would be followed by repression which, although legitimate, could be condemned as an unjustified ag aggression against the population. Let me interject right here. How long ago did you hear that was going to happen behind the woodshed? Two months? Again, this is not something from the inside. It's something that anybody could see if they know what's coming down. And this is like two months too late, actually. But it gains favor in the eyes of some. It admits what's going on in order to do that. And so I, as I say before, for those of you that are working to defend yourself, end the restraint of unwarranted liberty, uh, your unwarranted restraint of your liberty. These are the things that are, I've told you, you're on the right side of history to step forward and out them. They all know this is what's gone on. The same thing is also happening in Europe in perfect synchrony. It is quite clear that the use of the street protests is instrumental to the purposes of those who would like to see someone elected in the upcoming or presidential elections who embodies the goals of the deep state and who expresses those goals faithfully and with conviction. It will not be surprising if in few months we learn once again the hidden that hidden behind the acts of vandalism and violence there are those who hope to profit from the dissolution of the social order so as to build a world without freedom. Solve et coagula as the Masonic adage teaches. I'm just going to pause right there. Because on that, there's some other connections we'll make here as we go along and other links. Why did he even mention that? And then I'm going to point out to you an error that's gone on in history. That that word, Masonic, is not in one text of something that my mind was kicking into here that is also not in one text, but in another. That it kind of dates and focuses my attention on what this guy is talking to and through what he's talking to in that era. Although, and some of you people are just all over this, I'm, I don't do this study much. I just will tell you, I have, it's not that I haven't done some of the study. I don't talk too much about it. It's not our problem. We will knock those dominoes down but you have to get involved where it affects you first. Although it may be disconcerting, the opposing alignments I have described as are also found in religious circles. They are faithful shepherd. There are faithful shepherds who care to flock to for the flock of Christ, but there are also mercenary infidels. 
who seek to scatter the flock and hand the sheep over to devoured to be devoured by ravenous wolves. Boy, you got to pick up the word infidels there. It is not surprising that these mercenaries are allies of the children of darkness and hate the children of light. Who are the children of light? Who is this guy speaking for? Who does he work with? Really? Just as there is a deep state, there is also a deep church that betrays its duties and forswears its proper commitments before God. What a mouthful there. Thus, the invisible enemy, capital I, invisible, capital E, enemy. Again, capital G, God, define it. The commitments before God, which God, what God, capital G, capital I, capital E, which one, what is it, what is it, what are we defining? Thus, the invisible enemy, whom good rulers fight against in public affairs, is only fought against by good shepherds in the ecclesiastical sphere. And you better now start jumping between where they're talking secular and where they're talking ecclesiastical here. And if you don't, you're missing a ton of what's being stated in a lot of this. Because right after he goes and guides the discussion from good shepherds in the ecclesiastical sphere, he says, it is a spiritual battle, which I spoke about in the recent appeal, which was published on May 8th. Appeal is capitalized. In other words, you've got to go find out what that appeal he was talking about. It had a title. That's how I'm telling you these, these words he's using. They're capitalized, means something. So there's a larger context going on about this, and the appeal happened to be, again, with the outing of the pedophiles, which on its face would be a good thing, but I don't think that's, again, I think that's setting up a perception. Because when I read this story, this is outing up a whole, outing a whole bunch of other things, and it's contorting a bunch of reality, and it's conforming a thought of people who read it, and it's really disassociating. At some point, if you don't keep track of the secular ecclesiastical, he's going to be able to take and impose a religious imposition on you and take it away from you so that you don't perceive it that way. That's what he does in this letter. He removes that ba that foundation identity. And that's what I found very critical in the tactic that this letter pulls out. The first, For the first time, the United States has in you, has in you a president who courageously defends the right up to life, who is not ashamed to denounce the persecution of Christians throughout the world, who speaks for Jesus Christ and the right of citizens to freedom of worship. Your participation in the March of Life, uh, and more recently your proclamation on the month of April, the National Child Abuse Prevention Month, are actions that confirm which side you wish to fight on. And I dare to believe that both of us are on the same side in this battle, albeit with different weapons. Now remember, child abuse is, doesn't fix it at all. It's the rights of child. It's what we've heard where uh, finally come to the point that Epstein didn't kill himself. And that brings up a whole other group of people, which I think we can tie together later. For this reason, I believe, again, the pickle fork, it doesn't matter where you go, you're going to come down to, it's a branch, it's a branch tree. It's, the, it's an evil tree, ultimately. It's got its branches everywhere. It has dominion of this place right now. For this reason, I believe the attack to which you were subjected after your visit to the National Shrine of St. John Paul II, this is critical to go back to another definition, so understand where they are there, National Shrine of St. Paul, uh, jo John Paul II, is part of the orchestrated media narrative which seeks not to fight racism and bring social order, but to aggravate dispositions, not to bring justice, but to legitimize violence and crime. Not to serve the truth, but to favor one political faction. But it's all politics, so it doesn't matter what you choose there. Until you step up and fight your own fight, you're going to be engaged and embroiled in that, even if you speak nothing about it. You're, on the, you're in the peanut gallery at that point. Remember now, he's not talking ecclesiastical, but he did admit to a deep state in the church. 
And it is dis disconcerting that there are bishops, getting back to the ecclesiastical here, such as those whom I recently denounced. And this is about outing the people in this, uh, this national shrine. Did you know the national shrine, Catholic shrine in the United States? Is it, what, where is this? <laughs> Do we even know? Did the president went there? And that's supposed to support Christianity when it's actually the Vatican he's supporting? Do we even understand what we're talking here when it, because they throw out the word support Jesus Christ, that that's what's going on? When you understand it religiously, there's a, a group that the Vatican just signed back onto. I was thinking it was a year ago. It's already been five years since they did all that. Since 2015, I brought all this out again. Five years later, we're talking about similar stuff. The advancement as they move this along, this, this archbishop's right in on it. Making him a place for himself in people's mind. And it is disconcerting that there are bishops such as those who I recently denounced who, by their words, prove that they are aligned with the opposing side. They are subservient to the deep state, to globalism, to aligned thought, to the new world order, which they invoke ever more frequently in the name of the universal brotherhood, which is nothing, it's universal brotherhoods in italics, which was nothing Christian about it, but it, which invokes the Masonic ideals of those who want to dominate the world by driving God out of the courts, out of the schools, out of the families, and perhaps even out of the churches. Why is this archbishop identifying the Masonic ideals in this letter relative to what you see in the world and going on? He's done it again. This wasn't an accident. The American people are mature and, ha and no have now understood how much mainstream media does not want to spread the truth, but seeks to silent and distort it, spreading the lie that it's useful for the purposes of their masters. Is that really a true statement? Are the American people that mature? My view behind the woodshed says we're not. Why? Because I didn't see an outpouring of all of you all protecting yourself in the unlawful and unwarranted restraint of your liberty over a fraud over something demonstrably shown to have not been able to be certified to by the governments that were supposedly required to, unless you didn't say anything. And you didn't. So I don't think the American people are that mature at all. And so this is a what? A puffing up of those that want to perceive themselves to be mature, and they're not. However, it is important that good, the, that the good, who are the majority, wake up from their sluggishness and do not accept being deceived by a minority of dishonest people with the unavowable purposes. Well, he just made the comment that I've been telling you, you need to step up and out those, uh, those minorities that were dishonest people with unavowable purposes. That's COVID-19. So you're not, he says right there, you're not really, uh, you're not really a mature people. And nobody is in, that, that, that hasn't stepped up, actually. And we see that when we do, we have a lot of ground to cover real fast in order to get ourselves into shape, if you will, for this, this mission that some of you have accepted. But right there in that, that paragraph, it's pretty clear. He's saying no one came after us, so we're kind of free to do what we will. He goes on to say, it is necessary that the good the children of light, come together and make their voices heard. What more effective way is there to do this, Mr. President, than by prayer asking the Lord to protect you, capital L, define it, Lord, liege Lord, folks, uh, the United States, and all of humanity from this enormous attack of the enemy, capital E. He just talked about the United States there, folks. He did not talk about the United States of America. If you don't, you don't think I'm reading too much into this, he gives me a second witness in the same letter and explains that. Before the power of prayer, the deceptions of the children of darkness will collapse. Their plots will be revealed, their betrayal will be shown, their frightening power will end in nothing, brought to light and exposed for what it is, an infernal deception. Mr. President, my prayer is constantly turned to the beloved American nation 
where I have the privilege and honor to, of being sent by Pope Benedict the, the 16th as uh, Apostolic Nuncio. In this dramatic and decisive hour for all humanity, I am praying for you and also for all of those who are at your side in the government of the United States. I trust that the American people are united with me and you in prayer to Almighty God. He makes the distinction there, the United States and the government is the government. He makes a differentiation for the beloved American nation. He trusts that the American people are united with him. And I don't understand how anybody could be if they don't really understand what, what he's actually saying until you read through the read through the, the the lines here. He goes he goes on to say here united against the invisible enemy of all humanity. I bless you and the first lady, the beloved American nation, and all men and women women of goodwill. There's a distinction. You're not part of all of humanity if you're a men and women of goodwill. And I say that because I, my study would say that that's exactly, he said that he knows that. And so it sounds really helpful, sounds good, sounds like there's some support. You find out he's against pedophilia, you think he's a whistleblower. And when you read inside what he's calling out, he's calling out a faction difference within the ecclesiastical realm that is looking more like it's trying to gain power another faction inside the government trying to gain power there's a discussion I think it's on another link that was the end of the, sta the, the story right there another story I think he's actually invoking the priests the, the honorable priests within the administration who are these people inside the administration that are priests in the ecclesiastical sense in the secular side this seemed to me to be a, a reinforcement to follow the path of the children of light as opposed to the Masonic view. History of the Knight of Columbus comes up in my mind when that, that actually popped up the, at the Paul, um, shrine to Pope Paul uh, the second in Washington, D.C.? What's it doing there, folks? If you understand the three points of power, what's it doing there? H historic History of the Knights of Columbus came up because that's included in, <laughs> that place is included in the story on the wiki for that. The History of the Knights of Columbus begins in its foundings in 1882. And the Knights of Columbus was initially a mutual benefit society for the membership of practicing male Catholics. Today it advocates for Catholic causes and provides a range of philanthropic and supportive services with the Catholic institution worldwide. It's also one of the most, the world's largest insurance companies and operates the shrine to Pope John Paul II in Washington, D.C., where this whistleblower outed the people, the people that were there that the Pope Francis knew were doing child abuse. what we talked about Masonics, why I was thinking Knights of Columbus, and it's tied to that building. But when you talk about when you talk about the Masonic side, it also brings up what? The Jesuit side. Which brought up the oath again that we've heard, the Jesuit oath which I've read before. And I did a little more research. And I looked and I found out somebody's making a discussion that apparently they're supportive of Catholic faith and the church and all that. Fair enough. Then he points out, I'll give you a link, he points out that there's two two of these oaths in evidence. And without getting all down into it, the one that was used, there was one, one that originates all this is in 1883, came from a book, uh, a report, you know, an, 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 a, a publication, independent of any political uh, over overthrow over tones that printed this oath where we heard that you make the statement apparently I furthermore promise and declare that I will when opportunity presents make and wage re relentless war secretly and openly against all heretics 
This one in this version says Protestants and liberals, as I am directed to do, to extirpate, exterminate them from the face of the whole earth, and that I will spare neither age, sex, or condition, and that I will hang, burn, waste, boil, flail, strangle, and bury alive these infamous heretics, rip up their stomachs and the wombs of their women, and crush their infants' heads against the wall, in order to annihilate forever their inexorable race. That when the same cannot be done openly, I will secretly use the poison cup, the strangulation cord, the steel of the poignard, poignard dignity, uh, or authority of the person or persons, whatever may be their condition in life, either public or private, and as I am, uh, as any time may be directed, so that to, to do by an, any agent of the Pope or superior of the Brotherhood of the Holy Faith of the Society of Jesus, which is a military arm as we understand of through the Roman Catholic Church. No, that was done in 1883, documented. What was also documented was a different version. And this is where the mistake happens with this archbishop. He refers to this one which cut me to believe in maybe the first one was the real one. It doesn't use Masonic, but it's true. For as much contention as there is over this oath, one of them's true, because it wasn't both denounced. The second one is denounced, is not denounced. The first one's denounced because anybody can put something in congressional record from this link I have. The second one's not denounced because it was presented as evidence of a political maneuvering to... Uh, Put bring bring uh, hatred upon the Democrat Democratic Party member. This one says, which I found, which is the problem, but which the Archbishop today references. I do further promise and declare that I will, when opportunity presents, make and wage relentless war secretly and openly against all heretics, Protestants and Masons, as I am directed to do. And we go back to what reference the statement to Trump was talking about Masons is the error of this one. Maybe we see a different agenda going on here now. Again, the pickled fork. It doesn't matter which one of these groups you go into. It's always good cop, bad cop, whenever they need it for you. And I have a second link here about this oath. It doesn't talk about the Masons. And the Masons being talked about, the Archbishop is focusing on one avenue that goes through the congressional record, which may be the setup that most people pick up on, which is being used to denounce that as valid. Another object of all of this. So I just I offer these two links just for you to read it. I, the the oath, that oath was was in my mind when I started reading this guy this Archbishop statement. I think we're looking at a deception within a, certainly a deception within a deception. And if we ever, uh, even when they talk in the things that you would want to see done, and when you translate that into agreement with the one who's making the speaking or what they support and promote, you're making a big mistake. It's like the machinations and dancing with the machinations in the uniform thinking they're your friends. The Jesuit order is a military order. It's the military running this place. Someone who ostensibly is seen as a whistleblower is actually professing the misinterpretation of the Jesuit oath in order to promote what? The Jesuit order. And yet you heard nothing about any of that in that discussion. There's also another discussion that I didn't read. I should go back. It gets more into the religious interpretation of things. People, a lot, of, a lot of people don't like to hear that. I don't tend to follow in on it. I have my own understanding on things. But it goes into the discussion. When you read the words relative to the Catholic Church, I should really find that. You find out that you start to realize that this, this archbishop isn't leaving. isn't really a whistleblower. He still supports what's going on in the Vatican. It's just he's kind of, well, angered or set out to be made out as a good guy to say other things. But he makes, and I can't find right now, he makes a comment. And relative to the ecclesiastical side, he makes the comment that 
He makes a prayer to through the intercession of Mary. And that's not actually biblical at all. That's Catholic doctrine. So he supports the Catholic doctrine, the Vatican. He's not really what he claims to be as a whistleblower. Just that there's an internal deep state infighting going on, no different than we see the one in Washington, there's one in the Vatican. Do we have another one over there in London going on for the economics? Is that what's happening? Are we missing that one too? And so this is a, to me, I know I read this, maybe people aren't interested in it. As I was reading it, I was reading, this is just another tactic letter for the enemy of the people, the, the men and women of the world. And the imposition and the influence inside a, a secular government to gain the favor of a president to essentially, essentially continue the will of the uh, one of the factions of, of a couple that are trying to run the occupation over your life, which is again the problem for us, you and me. It doesn't matter who runs that occupation. You're still going to be occupied. And until you throw it off, until you figure out how, until you understand the organizational structure that's around us now and how to start to break back, break away at it, and I have, I have suggested I'm one of the few, if not the only one that's ha I look around, I just don't see anybody understanding any of this. None, as I told Vince, none are offering how to engage this. I do. And it's not because I do that makes it right. I tell you, go read for the fact that there is this thing to do. It appears maybe to be the only thing short of going to an ultimate out, all-out war, which appears everybody seems to want to do. They want an everything I see. They want to bring a gun out and do the big old bad thing. Look at me, I'm going to protect somebody. When I told you like last week, and I've told you over and over, had you actually not given lip service to that Constitution and walked in and stopped the usurpation of the establishment that was given to us to protect us and not allowed it to be overrun by these enemies within the gate now beyond sitting in the seats of decision. You wouldn't have had to go to that. That you don't know how is really another shame that needs to be corrected. But it becomes your only answer, as I predicted in 1999 in my writing. You're drunk, on the, you're drunk on this Second Amendment, right? You think that's going to answer everything. You don't look at anything. You're not the kind of people that need to be making decisions here. And yet, if you take a step back, quit giving lip service to the Constitution, you find out there's still remedy that can't be suspended. You can move in mass on that, and now you make a record to justify the thing you don't have right now in order to continue in, a la Virginia sanctuary city nonsense, as I corrected for you there, how the posterity can move for maladministration. And you don't have to ask permission once you've established that record. If you don't establish that record, you look like a bunch of enemy combatants. You look like a bunch of the enemy. You look like the children of darkness that are really are not, but you're really not the children of darkness. You're the, not even the children of light. Because you're not in that paradigm either. You're not sitting on that pickle fork. But now everybody sees it. Maybe glad, glad to see this. You're in a military occupation. Now, someone else writes about it after it happens, after the tanks are rolling everywhere. Military occupation of America begins. Well, okay. We can now see the military in, in writing now. Someone else sees it. But it's not beginning, folks. You just never escaped from it and didn't know that. And now you hear the in, influence coming from an ecclesiastic side communicating to the secular side to try and bring unity to this and guide someone to make a decision that's suggestive of one of the factions. And boy, I'm not treating this justice on this whole topic. When we went into Masonics and we go into Jesuits and we go into all that, I attempt not to go through too deep on that. You all ask why, because it won't get us anywhere more than what we need to be doing right now to stop the oppression against each one of us 
Not with the Second Amendment, because we're up against a, a superior force right now. And I told you they were going to get position on us. And they're doing it. They're doing it right now. So much so that now the tanks are rolling. Now everybody sees what I've been telling you for years. There's a military occupation on America. Police soldiers regard the both guilty and innocent alike as enemy combatants. Finally, someone is writing about it again. It's old news to me. Totally expected. It goes through the discussion, which you need to read if you don't understand how this is all working about. This art, this writer, Kurt Nimmo, goes through. He's not an unintelligent guy. He writes well. I, I'm di I, I guess my my dissatisfaction anymore is everybody with a needed, a cool insight, the things that can write, they're right after the fact. And the problem is that gets us into a habit of reading after the fact instead of looking forward and realizing we have something to do ahead of time. And it's there to do. And yet we also have a, a knowledge, I believe, that we're not, we really don't have the capacity yet. We're not capable yet. We know that. And so we would avoid every type of engagement at all, more than to continue talking after the fact and reading others that write so well and speak to us. That's another subtle deception going on as well. And Kurt does a great job of pulling out, uh, goes through the Macron, the neoliberalists, all these liberals and this and that, what's going on over in other places. He talks and brings up what? The fact of uh, Trump you know, threatened to violate posse comitatus? He brings up what? John Wu and the Bush administration? The very memo I've been talking about, murder memo that came out to justify that you're an enemy combatant and can be indefinitely detained without due process? And you went to crickets? Eight years, folks. And someone finally writes an article, ties it all together for you like I've been saying. If you don't listen to me or don't have to hear it from me, maybe listen to Kurt. But the one thing that again, bothers me. No one looks further. Once they know they see this, they don't work, work further. They can document how we're here today, but no one looks to the future and say, what are we going to do about it? And for as much as I appreciate his writings, it's like it's like the attorney I love to hate. Uh, what is it? Uh, I don't remember his name. John White something. At any rate, Rutherford Institute. Never actually tells you what you need to do. Lots of ideas. Here, try this and this and this. But nothing that, that we can relate to that is what the, what the establishment would, would respect. And so, we're, if we need it, here again, military. This is not the police. This is a police action. It has been. They're making it more obvious. In that, uh, in that environment, you have to learn how to proceed more correctly. Don't be the vet that's sitting in a protest street that got shot in the head by another protester or the other one that gets shot in the head by a, by a cop. Take your energy and go where you're supposed to go out of that promotion, out of that, that sucking sound of, of, of interest and, and deception and move it back to where the Constitution says it's supposed to be. I really don't know what else to say. I've told you, stay out of the streets. Go into where you're supposed to go. Object in the right way like the system has said they're waiting for you to do. Prove that's not available to you first. And then you still have one more step before you go to the guns. If you're doing nothing, you're not even on the, on the path. You don't have a complaint, from what I can see. I'm talking objective basis here. I'm not talking about what my druthers are about what's going to happen. Again, Virginia's Constitution, in one section, lays it out for everyone if I, we hadn't uh, seen another example. We have some steps to do to justify an action. Even the Declaration of Independence was that thing. Did it mean you didn't fight? No, but at least you're justified in your fight before everybody else.
Now, I've said also, you have to get out and change these policies and these laws to stop the military from beating you down and having a license because they now fall under, fell into this thing the Supreme Court has allowed to them, I think it's since 1967, something called qualified immunity. I've told you it needs to be removed. Well, House, new House bill would revoke qualified immunity for police. I mean, I don't even want to read this stuff. Once I tell you this, you can go find the link and get it at the link in the broadcast. You should be able to read it probably faster than I would go through it and to see that this is on the board. And But then you can't say, okay, well, somebody's doing it, so I don't have to. It said would. It's not done yet. It's also federal, not state. It's not local. And so you're on the getting to the point where people are starting to have to watch out about the natives getting restless here. And thank you for the observation. That was a Twitter thing that went through. Appreciate that observation. We are in that moment. We're seeing all the evidence that the, the natives have gotten restless. But that's a promotion. That's not the natives getting restless I'm talking about. The natives have to get restless properly. Or they can be disregarded and dismissed. And there's a simple way to do it. And you don't have to get shot in the head over it. You don't have to get pushed down and tripped and have the back head have your head busted wide open. Like I see so many people falling victim to. Self-initiated wounds, if you will. This is not, not something that anybody was supposed to be doing if that's what, if they're going to check what's going on. And this is the ignorance of the population. This is a serious defect in us. A bill would make it, would make it easier to sue police officers and other government officials for violating police civil rights was introduced in the U.S. House by two lawmakers Thursday. Uh, again, civil rights. Go read Title 42, Section 1981. This whole thing is so absurd that, that your rights are to extortion, extortion are, are going to be protected, essentially, by this. You're just not going to be able to, the cops are just not going to be able to uh, utilize qualified immunity. It doesn't mean they're going to stop the extortion against you. You'll read how this thing actually works. This is a amending, if you will, the re make bringing teeth back to the Ku Klux Klan Act. And if I remember right, there was a question on Ku Klux Klan. What did Ku Klux mean? Well, I think it's a separation of the word Ku Klux and Ku Kloros or something. It means circle. And the Klan is kind of interesting because it's spelled with a K. I don't know how you spell Klan with a K. But this is all the stuff that we get involved with. It's all this nonsense. And we get look past a lot of that. And now they're going to come become heroes to try try to get, get get rid of qualified immunity. And the courts are saying that they're agreeable to looking at it. The problem is they're the ones that fabricated it. It's only a doctrine. In fact, I have a, a link to qualified immunity explained. I think it's in this article. They explained to us that the court invented the doctrine. Now, since when is that? Wouldn't that be a violation of the separations of, uh, of the branches of government? And yet, it still survives. There's an argument over whether or not it should be removed. Uh, qualified immunity, the invention the court now is willing to revisit, is going to be engaged. And we haven't focused on this condition, which is established because. It, 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 defi it helps define the military occupation you've been under since the Civil War. But they just invented out of whole cloth this idea, you'll find out, which is clearly a separation of powers problem, as well as other things. And it just occurred to me, how do you, why, don't, why don't we get some people, why don't the attorneys sue every member of the Supreme Court for imposing a doctrine without warrant in law. It made it up out of whole cloth. It's not what the Congress intended. When you hear and read this qualified immunity explained discussion, you'll hear that the, there is so many blocks now to try and get a lawsuit underneath the Ku Klux Klan Act that you almost, you cannot get a case in. Why? Because if there's no prior precedent to allow you in, you can't get a case to go in. Well, that just eliminates, that effectively eliminates that act. Where did the judiciary have the right to make a set of decisions that allowed that? A rhetorical question, no one wants to pose it. 
why don't we sue? Get a group of well, where's the attorneys to not sue these uh, these people that are holding this idea that their doctrine can re essentially over time eliminate remedies that the government, the Congress gave to the, the judiciary to enforce. But to me, it looks like the fulfillment of the continuing military occupation that you're on. And so, good, we have someone that's going to bring, try to get at the House. So you got another, you got a whole other section of the law. The Senate has to know agree. And the Senate's not too, too liking the fact that you move, remove qualified immunity for all of you uh, Republicanites that are protective of them. They want you to be beat down. In fact, if I understand this, Biden is the one that offered that, and that's when the problem really started happening. And so why would the Republicans like what Biden did either, if you're talking about political purity? Folks, it doesn't exist. It's whatever gets the agenda along and gets you to buy into it. And until people step up more and more correctly, we're, we're not going to get this thing fixed. And as I say that, I, here this last few days, we're really gearing up. We had a big conference, a really important conference call I had to be on relative to a minor. And that's what the whole problem is, trying to figure out how do we, the law is clear. It's the system that's obstructive. And how do we, how do we deal with that? We have serious, some serious problems, and sitting around twiddling our thumbs about it is not going to solve those problems. And where we have COVID that each one of us is unlawfully and unwarrantedly, unwarrantedly, is that a word? Unwarrantedly, I'll say it three times to make sure it's a word. Restrained of our liberty, and we don't move in our own defense, we, we are in some real trouble. Can we move in our defense? That That is answered to the next second you decide to go ahead and do that. That's how close we are, I think, in all of this to, to changing all that. But it's going to take the will to do so. It, it takes somebody who has some inner respect, responsibility to themselves. I'm, uh, you can say, I, I've, I'm, enough's enough, I'm not going to take it anymore. Be your own network, I guess. Move in your own defense. COVID, operate, COVID op uh, allowed for that. It's now, you see, that I told, it's coming on like I told you. I'm going to re reiterate what I said. Uh, even here, I'm looking at the next article. Is jo the operational connections from John Rappaport. Another article, he says this is an operation too. It's now clear for everybody. If you didn't believe me back in December, it was coming. Or first of January, it's coming. And, and how? Medical? And what they do if that when they ran that out, they'd continue? It, it, well, now everybody's seeing it. The operational connections. John says he sees it the way he analyzes. This is an operation. I couldn't agree more. It's only what I've been always saying. You're in an operation. We've been told they, they slip and they tell us that. When are we going to step up in defense of ourselves? And I don't mean walking out there and thinking you can Rambo the thing. I think that's that's what I'm seeing in a lot. Of, in fact, some of the some of the firearms I'm finding, excuse me, I may have insulted that. Some of the arms I'm seeing coming out are really remind me of Rambo-esque. We think we, that's is what we've been programmed to believe we can do. We don't have a clue. And my thought on that is if that's where we're going first and we're responding through that image, we're already going wrong to begin with, let alone watching as I, we see people into engage with the things that they ought to be doing and they don't really know where to start. We have no command of ourselves. We have no command of the condition that's been stolen from us. And we have no familiarity with it. And the requirements were such that we were to maintain all of that. And since we didn't, I don't know who has an excuse, one, that's actually valid. So, John Rappaport, again, I could read this stuff. I don't know what, I don't know what to do. I, I'm not really a reader. These, these are tabs just to remind me of the other things that are going on in society that are giving us notice that if you didn't see it before, here it is. Here's people that have great insight that will tell you certain things and they can give you the nubbins of what you could be using, but it will only make sense in that capacity once that is the subject of the wrong you need to make right. And you intend and work and persist to do the righter thing. In the face of all odds, 
I mean, I look at the words here, you know, it's great stuff. But to me, it's evidence of a way you can utilize a statement. If you didn't have another statement, these writers can tell you a condition you can work with to start you on the path. If you don't understand the words I'm saying, and no disres- no judgment or disrespect, I was asked to, what's, what's the method on, on, res- on the fear that's the, the, the anxieties that are being built by this COVID? And I had to come back and say, but I've given, I've talked about the method for six months. I don't know what more to give. I don't know what more to say. The words come out of me to tell you, if you just write them down and then put them in context, you'll see what you're after. Habeas is not an unknown thing to go do. It's maybe unfamiliar. There may be a textual formality form that must be made, met. But that's the only, and I've explained it to you, why that's the only method. And yet, people don't recognize that. That's a problem. It's not a judgment from me. We have a problem. We, the people, have a problem. Just stating we have a, I can carry a gun, and so I have the Second Amendment, and I go walk around like I'm some militia, I'm going to protect everybody, that's, that's what they really want you to do because you're not going to go after what you need to be doing, which is more what I'm saying. And I'm going to continue to say that until I'm shown uh, the alternative that's actually more valid. Now, we, I've showed you, you could go like injunction, but that's not really the answer either. And I've showed you why. And I've really now understood the technical part behind that, why you don't want to take it to the state. They move it to federal government. If you didn't understand the federal discussion here is more powerful than your state so far and how that's a violation of your of your establishment am i talking too fast again see it doesn't matter if i'm talking too fast it means you're not ready enough on the things that you need to be read in that's our problem and i think another emailer told me more that they understand some of the principles of the law that i'm speaking what i'm saying it's understood pretty quickly so if you're finding that it's trouble, maybe you need to settle down and, and tr- teach yourself some of the principles that underlie the thing that this that's coming against us, that it, these occupiers are using to come against us. And if you think I talk about like this because I like to talk about it, or, I'm, or it makes me sound like I know what I'm talking about, so that's important to me, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of having to talk about it. I want to stop. I want you to help me to stop. I want you to understand for yourself how to defend yourself. And if we together can't use the law to defend ourselves, then the administrators of that law need to be removed, and there's provisions for all of this. And it doesn't have to go to the Second Amendment first. And the more I think about it, the more important it is that we take every step along the way because we're so diminished. We're going to need every step that there is between now and when we go do to maybe have to choose the ultimate answer, we will have to have in us the principles in order to know why and have the record that shows we have no other option. And they can't be twisted when you make the record like you see going out like you I read the letter from the vic- the archbishop that oh sounds so warm and fuzzy and I'm looking, it's looking like some some deceptive, it's just a big deceptive letter as well advancing an ages old agenda which just happens to be another the one of the hands it's a handle of the pickle fork that that same those same agents uh, foreign agents are ex, uh, exploiting against you in other names let alone other groups i'm talking the name like sustainability and through all this other consensus and diversity why is the military talking about all this why why are they under, you read the no, the notice to us that they're not happy that it's not as far along as it ought to be for them. I mean, I pause here. I don't, I don't even talk in anything new. I don't talk in any discussion. That should be self-evident. We have a problem. Now I'm kind of ranting a little bit, not saying anything. All right, I'm going to repeat myself because the answer is stop complaining and start taking the action you need to take. Understand you don't know what you think you know. You don't know how to apply what you thought you knew, and what you knew is probably not enough. Because what we're getting into is a more 
form, formulaic application that is the, uh, forms the objective basis that can't be denied that's been violated. And until you've identified that, your opinions mean nothing. In fact, in, our dis in my discussions with some people, I don't even want to, we don't even talk about what we think about. All I'm asking is, can you find this? And can you find that? And where is this? Copy and paste that. And can you find this and this? And go look in, at this in this way. Does it say that? Yes? Well, then bring that in, port that into your document. It's not opinion. It's strictly nuts and bolts. We're constructing the weapon to stop this, if you will. It doesn't get built on its own. It certainly is not going to be built in a day. And this is the disadvantage at this point that we've been lulled into that's being used to exploit and exploited against us. And I, as I sit here, my mind says, I'm still optimistic we could pull this off. I don't, maybe people don't appreciate this, like they don't appreciate there is no test. This changes when all Americans decide to change it, but in the proper way, not to go out and raise the place, but to reinforce what was objectively there to protect everybody. It's not ideal from just snapping your fingers and getting things done, but it's the more the more perfect way because of the record making that people I think don't appreciate. Everyone wants to diminish this thing and claim it's dealing oh you're working with the system. No, you're actually outing it for the failure that it is, that it was never to be able to do this. But they exploited your your apathy, your lack of response, your lack of knowledge about it in order to do what they've been doing to you. And I don't know how you can really under, feel good about the fact that you've they've allowed you to lock yourself down. And now they're moving the game out so that you're not going to have that ability to out that. And I find this is a serious problem coming on that I don't... A lot of people will be relieved because that will relieve what they have to do. And they'll just accept and be able to call out, oh, look at the machination dance and all that other stuff. Oh, these people are jerks, and oh, yeah, this is the tyranny. And they had the chance to stop it, and they didn't. In the future, everyone sounds like the, oh, they're the prophets. And no one lifted a finger. I guess that's the thing that keeps getting I me. Mean, no one's lifting an actual finger to stop this for themselves. And so I'm asking again, as I do every week, Engage where you can. Do it evolutionary. You've got to grow back into it. It was ours to keep. It's theirs to come and steal as any criminal. And they're doing it. And now they're doing it with force and big force. And it's a global scale whether or not, whether or not we want to go ahead and lose, get into so-called rabbit holes and lose ourselves in trying to endlessly research all the groups and people that have been set up to put us here. They're all irrelevant. What's only relevant is how you stop the oppression against you, and then each one of us doing that, that's how that those numbers start swelling up to stop it. Remember, thank you for what you do at Real Liberty, Liberty, reallibertymedia.com, and for all you do there at, uh, for us, and to be able to allow me to put the broadcaster, all you all that simulcast and re-promote and thumbs up and whatever, minds and bit shoot and all over, thank you for getting the word out. I appreciate it. I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs are nature willing. That's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose. Feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop ass.